Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. For today's episode, I've gotten a lot of comments over the last few videos of people asking me if I would do some thin aluminum TIG welding. So today, I'll do a demo on how to weld the thin stuff. So for this first exercise here, I got myself a couple pieces of 060 or 60,000. Some, uh, some people call it a few different things. So as you can see, I've got it tacked together here pretty well. I'm gonna wire brush it. It's already been hit with acetone, so it's nice and clean. But uh, basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just run a corner to corner bead on the outside and we're gonna use filler rod for it. So some people like setting up a pulse on pulse setting. What I mean by pulse on pulse, it's basically a setting on your machine that you can use for a lot of really thin metal, especially sheet metal and stuff like that. Pulse on pulse runs basically with a high amp and a low amperage setting. And what it'll do is the cycle will cycle between the high and low. Now you can set your machine so it'll run high and low a lot of times per second. So I don't know how many times per second, but you can set it so it runs through the cycle a lot of times per second. So it'll be like, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Now I prefer to have it set a lot slower. Uh, so the high and low cycle will, in the cycle of a second, probably be like high, low, high, low, high, low, etc. So it'll basically be like a high for almost a second, a low for almost a second. The reason I like doing that is because when it has a more drastic high and low cut, you get more of a puddle freeze. And what I mean by puddle freeze is that you will wed the edge of your uh, joint really well, put filler rod into it, and then it'll drop to the low amperage and it'll freeze that puddle. So you move on to the next puddle. That's just something I like doing. A lot of people do it differently, but that's the way I like setting up the pulse on pulse. For today though, I'm not gonna use pulse on pulse. I'm actually gonna do this straight manually. So it's a little bit trickier. Uh, I really gotta babysit it with the pedal. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go over my machine setup when I fire the machine up here. Um, and basically, we'll see how it works out. <laughs> So the first thing that's really important when welding really, really thin stuff is your joint fit up. So as you can see here, I've got this guy tacked together. I have not wire brushed it yet. I will do that. It has been hit with acetone, so it is a clean material so far. But as you can see, take a look at this joint. It's corner to corner, which is good, um, but it's really, really straight. So you don't have any gaps or anything like that. A lot of the times what'll happen is people will tack it on one side and then they'll go to tack it together on the other side, but it'll be slightly crooked. So you'll have one end that overlaps more than the other. So this is problematic because you'll get going with a nice clean bead and then as the joint shape actually changes, it'll start to burn through really easily on one area. So that's, that's a problem. So you wanna make sure that when you tack it together, you tack it together nice and evenly. Another thing, like I said, is it's gotta be clean. A lot of problems that people have is actually just because their material is not that clean. They'll be running a nice bead, they'll get halfway through and then some weird stuff will bubble out of the joint and just cause everything to go totally sideways. So make sure your stuff's clean. So there we go, nice and clean, ready to go. So another really common problem that a lot of people have when they're trying to weld thin stuff and they're going to use filler rod is that their filler rod is generally too big. So uh, for example, at my little shop here uh, in my garage, all I have is one eighth TIG rod. So what's gonna happen is if I try and use one eighth TIG rod, is the TIG rod's gonna melt at a lot higher temperature than your base material is gonna melt at. So if you start a weld, you're gonna start melting the base material real quick, which will happen like almost instantaneously. But when you try and put your filler rod in there, it's not gonna melt off in time. You, if you're ever experiencing problems where your filler rod is just blowing off or you're getting like a kind of a weird deflated balloon looking bulb thing on the end of the filler rod, what that is, is it's not melting off at the same temperature that your uh, base metal is generally melting at. So you wanna make sure that you're not using a diameter of TIG rod that's too big for the joint that you're gonna be welding. So, I'm gonna show you a little trick that someone showed me, a real easy way to get TIG rod that's small enough to weld something small like this. So you can put the thick stuff aside. And if you have a wire feed, or if you know anyone with a wire feed, you're just gonna get a length of uh, a MIG wire. This untangled here. So as you can see, this here, not gonna be real easy to use as a TIG rod, but I'm gonna show you the craziest trick that someone's ever shown me. So unfortunately, I gotta give a shout out to my stupid younger brother who showed me this trick. I gotta give props where it's due, so uh, shout out to you, dickhead. <laughs> this might blow your mind, because this blew my mind. Ready for this? You're gonna get the length of whatever TIG rod you want it to be. You're gonna measure about the same, maybe a little bit longer. So we're gonna cut it off here. Little clippy clip, there we go. 
So here's our TIG rod, still curly, right? Watch this. I got myself a little vise here. Squeaky vise too. So I'm gonna tighten it up real good in the vise. And then what you do is you try and get the other end of it into a drill. And it's easiest to clamp it down by hand because it'll go crazy and you don't want it to hit you. Actually, I should put eye protection on. There we go, we're safe now. Okay, so we got it nice and tight. Now, this might blow your mind. This blew my mind when I first saw it. So, I'm gonna stretch it so that it's straight and I'm gonna start to tighten it nice and slow. And you wanna keep it taut so that it's nice and straight. You ready for this? So I'm pulling on it at the same time and you're gonna do it until it breaks. There we go, it broke. Now check it out. Squeaky vice, let go. You got yourself a straight TIG rod. <laughs> Cut off the curly end there. There we go. So this t uh, MIG wire or TIG wire, uh, this stuff was 045. So it's about a 16th of an inch, give or take. There you go, you got yourself a TIG rod off of a little length of wire off a MIG spool. All right, so we're gonna use my Everlast 210 EXT for this one here today. So let's fire it up. Okay, so let's go through our settings and get it set up for what we're gonna do here today. So I'm on AC for sure. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna be using my foot pedal. I gotta turn the, I got no pulse on, so the pulse is off. So I'm just gonna quickly run through my settings here. So pre-flow is about a second. I got five amps for start amps. Zero up slope, welling amps. I'm gonna turn that down a lot. Try about 130 amps and see where that's at. What else we got here? So frequency, we're gonna crank this way up. This is the highest I'm gonna be using the frequency on this machine. So the Hertz is turned up to 250 Hertz. So real high frequency. Uh, from my balance, let's run it at about 35% on the positive side. Zero down slope, minimal end amps because it's real thin stuff. Lots of post flow and that's about it. I think that's all we're gonna do for our settings here. So the only other thing I'll go through as far as setup here is uh, my torch setup. So my torch, I'm just running a number eight cup, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, my tungsten is a 332 setup. So it's a 332 call it, uh, 332 tungsten setup. And I've got it slightly bald. Uh, it's tapered to a point with a teeny tiny ball put on the end. So it should handle the frequency pretty good. Okay, so we are set to go here. I just gave it a couple little extra tacks on top here, as you can see. I tacked up my start a little bit and my settings seem pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna weld to about halfway here and then I'm gonna stop. We're gonna take a look and see how it went. So all I'm gonna be mindful of is I just want my torch angle to be tilted back a little bit. So about 10 to 20 degrees or so, nothing too extreme. But again, we don't want it too steep because we'll get too much drag and that'll cause you to burn through. So what we wanna do is give a good fill right off the start here and we're just gonna keep an eye on it as we go. All right, here we go. There we go, so that didn't turn out too bad. Stop and take a look. So as you can see there, there is our pass. Didn't turn out too bad. You see a couple spots there. Got a little bog down probably right out in the middle there. It started to spill out a little bit, but I caught it with a little bit of extra fill. The extra fill causes it to chill down a little bit. So when you do something uh, real low, like uh, real thin like this, you wanna make sure you give a good fill so it doesn't burn through too much. But overall, Pretty happy with that as far as our first pass went. So let's give her a whirl and finish off the second half. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna dab up the end a little bit, give it a couple extra tacks. So 
So the reason I just gave it a few extra tacks on the end, basically what's gonna happen is when you get towards the end of any joint, but even more so with real thin stuff like this, it's gonna be smoking hot. So anything at the end will act as a bit of a catch or a chill or whatever you wanna call it so that when we get towards the end of it, that little pocket of fill that we put there already is gonna act as a heat catch a little bit. It's gonna stop it totally from blowing out the end of your plate. So just a good little thing to do to help you out near the end. So another thing you probably wanna do before you finish off a second half or multiple passes on something like this, let it cool down. This thing's smoking hot right now, so the more we let it cool down in between passes, the easier the second half is gonna be. Okay, so making sure my torch angle and travel angle is good, so tilt it back about 10 to 20 degrees or so and just get nice and comfortable with the run of my weld. Make sure I can see good. Here we go. So we're getting real hot at the end here. I'm backing off the pedal quite a bit. There we go. Not too bad. All right, let's take a look at it, see how it turned out. So overall, we didn't turn out too badly at all, I think. It's definitely not terribly consistent. There's a few things, you can see my stop start was a little goofy there at first, and it kind of stuck a little bit high at the start of the second half. But once I got it to sit down, everything seemed to flow pretty good. So again, at the end, you're gonna have a little bit of wackiness going on just because this stuff is smoking hot towards the end. But overall, consistency is pretty decent. You look down at lengthwise, our weld size is about the same the whole way. So our bead is about as narrow the whole way. We don't have too many areas that bog out really wide or like sit really tight and skinny. The whole thing's pretty uniform the whole length down. Flip it over, have a quick look inside here. Damn, that's hot. Overall, penetration looks pretty even, not too bad. It's a little bit shy on the stop start there, but it still got through. Overall, not too bad. So there's a weld on 060 and it went pretty decently. Not too bad, pretty happy with that one. All right, so, you wanna try something even crazier? I've got some even thinner stuff here. So this stuff here is 040, so 40,000 or whatever people wanna call it, but it, it's way thinner than the stuff that we just did. To be totally honest, I've never even welded stuff this thin. Uh, I got a hookup on these coupons, so shout out to my buddy Jordan. Uh, thanks, buddy. Uh, these are insanely thin. It's like, you can listen to it, it sounds like tin foil. This stuff is super thin. Take a look at it, it is crazy, crazy thin. So this stuff here, 040, um, this is about one mil thick. It's super, super, super thin. So I've already got a hit with acetone. I'm gonna wire brush it real quick here and then uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so I'm really making sure I get all of the stuff out of the weld joint here. So like I've said in previous, uh, in previous how to's I've done on my channel, when you wire brush, you wanna wire brush lengthwise. The reason that you wanna try and avoid wire brushing across your weld joint like this is it doesn't eject any of the debris and stuff that you wire brush off your material out of the weld joint. When you wire brush lengthwise like this, you wire brush all the way to the ends of the plate like you are, you're pushing all the stuff out. So there's actually not much left in there. So that's probably the best way you can wire brush this, this really thin stuff. All right, I might look like an idiot here in front of everybody. Okay, so as you can see, I've given it a couple extra tacks on the beginning and the end here, because we just want to make sure we have it tacked together really well, and I just wanted to see what my settings kind of felt a little bit like, so uh, this is going to get crazy, but uh, we'll see how far we make it here. I'm going to go for about halfway, stop, and see how it went. So travel angle, torch angle, and everything's all cool. I'm uh, making sure I can see really well, uh, and we're just going to make sure we give it a good start and good fill here, so here we go.
All right, that didn't go too bad. Let's stop and take a look. <laughs> so as you can see, this is super, super small. <laughs> this weld is absolutely tiny. It's like pin thin. How thin it is compared to my thumb there. Overall, it went pretty good. I was double dipping it the whole time. So what I mean by double dipping it was I was giving it a little bit more fill. Uh, so a couple dips for each puddle helped to keep the whole thing from getting too hot and running away from me. Overall, I was pretty happy with that first pass. So let's uh, just let it cool for a second or so and then we'll finish it off. So we don't have too much further to go actually. I definitely went over halfway on that first pass, but uh, what's gonna happen towards the end of this pass is gonna get really, really touchy. It's gonna get probably a little bit turbulent because uh, it's gonna be tending to wanna blow right through to the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go real slow. Uh, I'm gonna give a good heat. I wanna make sure that the puddle sinks down and sits properly so that the keyhole closes up properly. We don't want the keyhole blown open too much. So that's why I'm gonna make sure I'm giving it good fill. And then when we get towards the end here, you watch the last couple dabs. It's probably gonna, <laughs> probably gonna get a little dicey, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm pretty comfy. I can see everything really clearly and I'm gonna get uh, ready to go here. So here we go. So my torch angle, travel angle are exactly what they need to be. I'm making sure I can see clearly and uh, fill a rod ready. All right, here we go, arc on. That was, that was white knuckling it there. <laughs> All right, let's take a look, see what it looked like. So overall it turned out okay. Uh, the first pass was better for sure. You can see the first pass was super, super consistent. Everything looked pretty good. Overall, you can see for how thin this stuff is, my bead turned out pretty good. Uh, everything looks nice and straight. Uh, overall, looking at it down lengthwise like this, it looks pretty, uh, Looks pretty even. There's a couple spots it ducks in and out, but again, this stuff is 040, so it's hella thin. And uh, I've never even tried to weld this stuff before, so overall, I'm pretty stoked for how it went. There's another look at it there, pretty even, which is good. I have a quick look at the penetration on the inside there. It's all there, nothing really burned through too much. I'm pretty stoked that that uh, didn't turn into a huge mess. Everybody that stuck with me through this whole thing uh, all the way to the end here, I really appreciate it. Uh, these episodes are a lot of fun for me. I just get to dick around and try some different stuff. Uh, as you saw, I'd never even tried welding this real thin stuff before, so uh, you saw it. <laughs> this is my first try with the super thin stuff. Uh, and it went pretty well, I think it was all right. But again, thank you so much for watching my channel. Uh, if you haven't seen the other videos on my channel, uh, be sure to check them out. I do a bunch of really crazy TIG welding art projects as well as I do how to's. Uh, I do gear breakdowns and stuff like that. So I try and give a little bit of everything for, uh, for what my channel covers, but it's everything TIG welding related. So if you're a fan of TIG welding, make sure you subscribe, like and share, do all that stuff. It helps my channel grow and the more people that watch these videos, the more videos I'll make. If you have any ideas for uh, cool stuff you'd like to see that you ha I haven't done on my channel so far, leave it in the comments below. I read all my comments. So if you have a cool idea of something you'd like me to give a whirl, leave it in the comments below. I'll read it. But again, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you enjoy the other episodes on my channel. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have a good one. Peace.